Did you know, for the first 49 years of my life, I was homophobic, terribly homophobic, towards one person. That person was me. Why was I homophobic? Because I was afraid. Finally, at 50, I shed that fear. I came out. Hello, everyone. I'm Raga Olga da Silva. Let me take you back a few years to my first coming out. Actually, I did not come out. I was dragged out of the closet. I was 31. It was a dark, cold night in Wellington. I lived in New Zealand those days. Wellington is known for its wind. It blows and how. The days are very windy. And in the night when it blows, it leaves behind a certain whistling sound. One such night, I was lying next to the twins trying to put them to sleep. The lights were off and the house had the sound of a windy silence. Their father, whom I was in the process of separating, was in the other bedroom, catching up on news. I was singing the twins' favorite song, Do Dil Mil Rahe Hai, Magar Chupke Chupke. Suddenly, I was aware of the presence of another person in the room. I half opened my eyes. All I could see was a shiny blade glinting in the darkness. It suddenly felt very scary. I was, I was petrified. I thought we had a burglar in the house. My heart was thumping wildly. Have you ever felt a fear so deep that it leaves you petrified? That night I experienced it. I tried to move, but my body just wouldn't move. I tried to scream, but the sound was stuck in my throat. My mind was racing at a million thoughts a minute. I sensed that figure moving closer to me, as if in slow motion. I was now awaiting my death. And just as I thought, it was all over for me. I heard a familiar voice. You, you slut. I wish I had never given birth to you. I wish you were dead. And the voice of my mother echoed in that room. The angry, steely voice, steelier than that blade she held. I said, Mommy, shh, the kids are trying to sleep. I could sense her intense anger. My mother was furiously voicing how she found a letter that I had written to a friend about my current rocky marriage and the feelings I had suppressed over the years for my love and attraction for women that I could no longer ignore. I could really no longer ignore. All this while also thinking how my mother was always an expert at finding my hidden letters and diaries. She was so fearful of her own dreams that she felt I had shattered. Her first reaction was to kill me, to end it all. That would mean that the family did not have to go through shame and cause a scandal. She questioned me over and over again. How could you? How could you do this to me? What wrong have I done in my life that my own daughter would do this to me? I am cursed, she said. How selfish are you, she said, considering putting the children through the shame. Why can't you just stay married and have this wonderful life you have? Why, why, why? She asked me over and over and over. How could I tell her that it was my truth? How could I tell her that not living my truth was killing me each day? How could I tell her that the lies were destroying me every day? How could I explain to her that I was so aware of the social stigma that I was even homophobic towards myself? I was absolutely aware that I would open myself up for abuse, for judgment, for anger, for hatred, for ridicule. How could I explain that I felt a fear and that fear also lived inside of me? How could I tell her that in that moment, all I wanted for her was to say, don't worry. No matter what choices you make, you are safe with me. I will protect you. I will stand by you. But what she said instead was, what do I do? Shall I call you an uncle now? The one person who loved me unconditionally put conditions on love that night. That night was a long night. Many words were thrown, mostly one-sided. The blade was not physically plunged into me, but my mother's sharp words were, I think a huge part of me died that night. From guilt, from shame, from the thought that I'd brought dishonor to my family, 
from the fear of what lay ahead for my children, the sense of failure I felt for not living up to my mother's expectations of me. When we're not free to share the truth, what do we do? We lie, we hide, we pretend. I did exactly that. I put myself back inside the closet and shut the door. I continued with my work, my children, my family responsibilities. I was in a foreign country, all alone, raising a young family. And what choice did I have? But you know, rumors have a way of leaking out from the place of hiding. Rumors are dangerous. They are infectious. They are like virus. They spread from one person to another with lightning speed. I got used to weird stays. Friends not inviting me to their social gatherings. My family in India had stopped communicating. My workplace those days, although outwardly liberal, had their own way of showing their passive homophobia. The father to my children was struggling with this himself and there were regular moments of conflict. We shielded the children from much of this. My wonderful life was beginning to fall apart, but life went on. I'd resigned myself to it. Eventually, I gave myself permission to explore my true sexuality. I met once some wonderful women. Some of them, you know, have had similar experiences. It was heartening to see some lips so freely. I desired that. I desired that for my family. But that would have to wait. A few months later, I was out with my kids on a weekend. The kids were hungry, so we decided to go into a local grocery store run by, you know, an Indian family. I was picking up snacks for my four-year-olds when I heard a shrill voice from behind. Lesbian! Homebreaker! I turned towards that voice and I saw this small, sari-clad, middle-aged Indian woman. She pushed me hard and I fell to the floor with groceries falling from all above me. This tiny woman with a sneer on her face then turned and kicked me, spat on my face. The shopkeeper came to my rescue. My little babies were crying. Other shoppers were just simply staring. Thankfully, 18 years ago, there were no mobile phones to share my vulnerability all over social media. I ran out of that store that day with, you know, bundling up my distressed children in the car. I remember my hands trembling as I tried to get the cars, that the kids in the seats and put their seat belts on. I remember how my fingers felt out of control as I started the car. That had a huge impact on us. The kids were scared to go out for a long time. From that day onwards, I stopped. I never actually stopped looking over my shoulder. To date, I'm always alert. A part of me expects someone to come from behind me, push me and call me names and spit on me. That day on, I went even further back into my closet. Eventually, I met Nicola 14 years ago. She appeared in my life when I was ready. I was together, but I was broken. She helped me heal and slowly helped me put my broken pieces together, one piece at a time. We created a magical life together, Nicola, me, and our twins. We travel the world, we live in love, we share everything, and even built a successful business together. We often joke our kids won a lottery. They have two mums and a dad, that love them unconditionally. Some of our friends, you know, continue to be respectful towards us, but there were some who would not acknowledge our relationship. And I allowed them to goad me in the presence of other men and women. When they insinuated that I was available, I did not challenge them, even though I was clearly in a very committed relationship. When my family would acknowledge Nicola only as Raga's best friend or Raga's business partner, it would hurt us both. When people would ask Nicola, so do you have children? And she would have to make up stories. It would bother us. When we were not treated as a legitimate couple, it would cause us deep pain. I would live in fear of being found out and parallelly also live in remorse that my relationship was not accepted by our family, our friends and society. It would hurt me deeply to see Nicola not being given the respect as my partner. I retreated even further into my closet. I kept hiding until one day, thanks to my children, Nicola and the father to my children, I thought, this is it. I have had enough. And taking the lines from a famous quote, I said, if not me, who? If not now, when? I decided to come out. 
I published aspects of this in my first book, Untold Lies. I came out, finally, at 50. Imagine that. So what happened when I came out at 50? A lot happened around me and inside me. People said things like, oh, what, you're gay? Oh my God, I had no idea. Men told me, Raga, you've not met the right man, as if they were the ones who would make me straight. Some expressed joy. They said, Raga, I knew it. I love you for who you are. Your sexuality does not bother me. A couple of my girlfriends asked, cheekily, but did you ever think of me like that? My immediate family had never asked, never spoken about it, and perhaps it is their way of accepting me. My extended family, interestingly, embraced me, both from my mother's side and my father's side. I was particularly heartened by some very conservative people I know who I expected to reject me. They came up to me and showered me with so much love. And they're from the remotest part of India. Suddenly I received invitations from the smallest towns to the largest cities internationally. People wanted to hear about this 50 year old Indian woman who had finally come out. I heard from my son the other day that we are famous in a local supermarket where he works in London. Why? I asked him and he said, because I have two mums. I said, you told them? And he said, yeah, of course, it's very cool. I'm so proud of you both. And I thought, oh wow, I am cool. But wait, what happened to me inside when I came out at 50? You know, when the media first picked up my story, I was very anxious, very nervous. I was worried about what people would say. And then I reminded myself, hang on Raga, why would you worry about what people would say at 50? when you have been so homophobic towards yourself all your life. The fears that I had felt 18 years ago started to haunt me. I asked myself, was I prepared to go through the abuse, the taunts, the judgment, the ridicule all over again? Was I ready to let go of the fears? Was I ready to be free? I made the decision to finally come out of my closet. And almost immediately, a huge weight fell off my shoulders. I finally let myself be who I was. I'd finally stopped judging myself. In coming out, I had learned to accept myself. It almost felt like a rebirth. There was suddenly light in my darkness. I finally was able to walk with my partner with my head held high and provide her the respect she deserved. My double life disappeared and it merged into one beautiful magical life. Some people who I thought were my friends ghosted me, okay? So even today, I'm waiting for their WhatsApp replies. Now I have strangers who have become friends. They seemingly came out of just nowhere and they are sharing in my journey now. Truth does free us, lies destroy us. Even now, I sometimes walk in fear. When I go you know, home to India at immigration, I'm always on alert that they will drag me off to jail if they found out that I had a same gender partner. I still fear that someone somewhere will come up to me and spit on my face and kick me just for who I love and choose to be with. Let me leave you with a story of hope, a story that makes me smile each time I narrate it, a story that makes me believe my fight is worth it. As I shared, my children grew up in New Zealand. They had a close friend who was effeminate and camp. I love him and we are all aware, including his mother, that he may grow up to be gay. Our small family now live in London and I happened to see his Facebook post. Yes, my children's friends are on my Facebook. And saw a photo of him on his graduation day. He was wearing a stylish pink tuxedo with pink in his hair and the way he presented himself, mm, I said, wow. I asked my kids, hey, has Rahul come out of the closet to his family and friends? The kids just looked at me aghast and said, what do you mean has come out? Rahul is who Rahul is. He doesn't need to come out. He's just who he, he is. And that to me was it. Bingo, I thought. This is like music to my ears. This gives me hope. I hold my head high and walk this journey with pride now. I've often wondered though, what would have happened if I had come out at 32, all those 18 years ago, I truly believe this is what would have happened. I would have died, either by somebody else's hand or my own. 
No one should have had to come out at any age. We should just be who we are, isn't it? Closets are made for clothes, not for hiding our truth. Right? Thank you, everyone. I'm Raga Olga Da Silva, or totally out now. <laughs>